Hello, Keith Rucker at VisionMachinery.org. Guys, I got a quick uh, project. I say quick, but it's going to need to be done quick uh, for the museum. And uh, every year in August, uh, the museum closes down for a month, and it's a time that they do maintenance. We've talked about this in videos in the past. And once again, uh, they've got the steam locomotive in the shop, and they're doing just some uh, annual maintenance on there. One of the things that we were having some difficulties with or trouble with was the, the brake valve on the uh, locomotive. So there's uh, steam jam brakes up on the locomotive that uses the steam to actually uh, power the brakes on the locomotive itself. And uh, this little canister here contains the valve uh, for that braking system. And it's been leaking some steam, it's had some other things. So we took it off, took it apart, and got inside of it and found several issues with it that need to be uh, fixed up. It's only 100 years old, so you know it's probably time for some maintenance to it. I'm gonna zoom you in here and kind of show you a couple of things that we need to take care of and uh, what we're gonna be doing uh, in the next video or two. Well, we kind of got things partially taken apart here already. Uh, normally this little stem comes up through the top here and uh, there's a handle that you just basically turn. It turns a quarter of a turn. And when you do that, uh, on the inside of this, uh, basically there's just a couple of holes here. And depending on how this thing is lined up, the different holes will either send the steam out to exhaust or send the steam to uh, the brake cylinder. So uh, anyway, this is what we got to work on. So first off, down here on this plate, I'm gonna zoom you a little bit tighter. So if you look down this plate, it's uh, this, this little brass piece should be lapped in and be perfectly tight. And what's happened over the years, you can see where the steam has literally eroded around these two holes. And uh, I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually um, braze or weld this surface up and then grind it back down and get it flat so that we can have a good surface to lap on. And then this little brass piece uh, will be then lapped in place on there. Uh, to have a nice seal. So that's the first thing we got to do. The second thing is uh, this uh, little stem comes up through the bottom and this is uh, what the handle is attached to and we've got significant wear in here uh, and the, the top, the handle, uh, we, we had to actually do a little bit of grinding just to get it out. It's actually been deformed. It looks like someone has stressed it, turned it, actually twisted the top. So this uh, brass stem here has got to be reworked uh, to kind of get it back in. I think what I'm going to do is we're actually just going to cut this one off. We got to leave this casting on the bottom and I'm going to make a whole new stem and we'll put a hole in here, put it in there, pin the new stem in place and just uh, replace that whole piece of brass there uh, going up through there. So that's kind of the two jobs that we got. And uh, I think we're gonna start on this and uh, I'll bring you over and we'll kind of go through the process we're gonna do to fix it up. So to fix up this piece, um, we're gonna actually put some new material on the top here to, so that we can then get it ground and, and lap back down to the sides because there's some severe pitting in here. And I think what I'm going to do is uh, kind of do the, the rough work over on the surface grinder. I say rough work. We'll lap it in to finish it up. Um, but I, I need to index this. So the bottom was milled flat, but it's pretty rough. So I think what I'm going to do is we're going to start by just lapping this, make sure it's flat. Well, then we'll put that on the surface plate grind the bottom parallel to the to the top and then I can uh, go and weld this up and then grind the top back down and we can index off that bottom but before I do that I want to just lap this to get make sure we don't have any high spots on here so I'm just got a piece of sandpaper over on the surface plate and I'm just gonna sanded a little bit. You can see the high spots starting to come in here. You can see the dark areas are low spots. I'm just trying to get some, make sure I'm taking any burrs off so that when I put this on the surface plate, I'm getting a good true surface to, to, to then grind the bottom parallel. And you know, my goal here is not to clean all this up. My goal is just to have a good surface area and to knock off the high spots. We have succeeded. So let's take this over to the grinder now and we'll grind the bottom. Well guys, I think I missed uh, 
getting this on, on video, but um, I think my camera shut off on me. But anyway, we just uh, chucked this down to the surface or to the magnetic chuck here, and I just ground the, this side here. This is the bottom. And um, what that's gonna allow me to do is then once we get the, the top here redone, I can come in here and mag on that. That should be parallel to the existing face here, and then we can grind this in, and we should be miles ahead for lapping. So uh, that's the plan. We're gonna take this now and get this uh, welded up where we can uh, have a good clean surface to work on. So I got my piece over here. I'm just gonna put it on a, on a piece of fire brick. That just makes sure that I'm not sitting on a heat sink. And I'm gonna heat it up with this rosebud tip, and um, I may even braise it with this um, just because the brazing tip I got is on kind of on the small side. So I'm using this uh, cast iron rod again, and uh, this stuff is supposed to be good for like valve seats and stuff like that to, uh, if you need to refinish some. So we're going to try this. I've used it on a couple other things. So anyway, let's get going. Start by just getting some heat into it, slowly heat it up. I did take that top surface and uh, just tried to clean it up on the wire wheel to get as much of that grease and stuff out of there as I can and we'll bur probably burn some more out uh, as we heat this thing up. That should uh, have added the metal back in where we need it, hopefully. And we're gonna let that cool down nice and slow. I'm gonna wrap it up in this uh, blanket where it'll cool down slow. So while we're waiting on that other part to cool down, I'm gonna go ahead and get started on this uh, valve body here. And there's a hole in the bottom that the stem comes through but we can look down in there and you can't really see it on camera, but when you do, you can tell there's some fairly significant uh, galling down on the inside of this uh, bore. So I think what we're gonna do is we're just going to drill this thing out, ream it uh, oversize, and then I'm going to take a uh, bronze bushing here. We'll turn that to be an exact fit down in there and uh, then put a bronze sleeve in here uh, for this uh, inside bearing point. And uh, we'll have bronze on bronze. We're gonna make a new stem here, but I think that's gonna be better and uh, cause less wear than what we got now. Plus it'll take care of that galling that's down in there. Uh, that's just gonna mess up another valve stem. So uh, we'll just go over to the middle machine and because there's, the hole is actually there, it's on center. I'm probably not even gonna put this in the vise. I'm probably just gonna drill it and let the, the drill find the center and we'll just ream it and let it go right back down the same center. So uh, it's five eighths right now, or it's a little over five eighths. We're gonna go to three quarter. Uh, so I've got a 2164 drill bit, or excuse me, 2332nds drill bit, uh, which is just a little under three quarter. And then we'll run a uh, three quarter inch reamer down in there and then I can get a good measurement on what we end up with and turn the bushing where we'll have just a light press fit in there. All right, I got this over here where it's kind of floating around. It'll find its own center. And uh, 
That speed's probably all right. Let's just go ahead and drill this. All right, so we got that hole drilled. Um, and it's interesting, I looked down in this hole, this freshly drilled hole, and you can still see a bunch of uh, pockets down there. I think this casting just has a lot of inclusions in it, but those inclusions were creating wear areas in that bore. Uh, but it doesn't matter. We're gonna we're gonna fix that. We're gonna put a we're gonna put a nice uh, new bronze bushing in there, and that will not be a problem. So I'm gonna go ahead now, and we'll get this uh, ready to run the reamer down. Okay, we're gonna ream this now, and I've just. I had to set it down on the table because of the height uh, in here. It was too high up on the on the vise. I've got it up next to the vise so that if it it should catch on this side and kind of keep it from spinning. But I want this thing to float because my reamer has got a little bit of run out in it, uh, which is normal. But if your reamer floats, um, it's not a big problem. So let me turn the speed down. And uh, I don't like using a lot of heavy uh, oil on cast iron, but I do want to have some lube in here. So we're just going to hit it with some WD-40. And uh, that should help. Nice and slow. And it's just going right down. And we're through. All right. So the next thing I need to do is figure out how long this uh, bushing needs to be down in here. Because, uh, you know, there's only so much room down in there. I got a measurement earlier, but then I realized there was a bunch of packing still down in there. So I'm gonna get another measurement. And what I'm gonna use is this is a set of um, uh, groove micrometers, they call them. And they're measured, usually used for measuring a groove, but I can actually get this stem down in here and I can measure between these two points. And, and I've actually already done it. And basically it's 5 eighths of an inch. It's 625, a little bit over that, but we're gonna make it 625. Uh, but anyway, that's a nice little tool uh, to be able to reach down in there and get a get a measurement. So, so I took that bushing over and I just parted it off on the lathe and got it to uh, five eighths inch length. I did that off camera, uh, but I want to do want to show you this. This is an uh, adjustable um, uh, mandrel, and what we're going to do is we're going to slide this in here, and this is on a cone. So basically, you just sandwich it in there, and now I can basically put this on the lathe between centers and that should be running concentric with the outside. So uh, we'll just uh, do that. That should be nice and tight. And uh, I'm gonna set that up on the lathe and we can cut that diameter. Then that basically just holds it and has it turning just like you want. Show you guys this setup over here. So basically I've got that mandrel that's running between centers. So I have a dead center in my chuck here. I actually just turned a 60 degree taper on there. Uh, make sure it was running concentric. I didn't have an actual dead center to go in this headstock. And I got a live center on this end. I put this between center. I got a drive dog in here. The drive dog is hitting the chuck. So as the chuck goes around, uh, it basically spins this shaft here. Right, that's loose, but as you can see, that drive dog will go up against one of the jaws there on the chuck. So now all we got to do is just turn that to diameter and we should be ready to press it in. All right, I just checked that with a snap gauge over there to check my bore, and it's uh, it's pretty much right on three quarter, maybe just a couple of ten thousandths of an inch uh, over three quarter. Uh, so I want about a half a thousandths interference. Uh, so we're going to shoot for probably six, seven, ten thousandths over three quarters of an inch, uh, and right now it's about seven eighths. So fire the lathe up. Skim pass, take a light cut, and get a good measurement to start with. about 
806 right now. We got about 50 thousandths to come off. I'm super, super close now. We're just gonna hit it with some emery cloth and polish that last little bit out. Ten thousandths over. I'm shooting for seven or eight, so I only got a couple of tenths. If I hit six, seven, probably six or seven tenths over is where I want to be at to give me the proper interference over there. Let's see what we got this time. So that's on eight now. That took about a tenth off. That's about five. That's about seven there. It's about six. So it's got a little bit of a taper to it, but that's gonna be just fine. That's perfect. We can make that work. I'm gonna put a little bit of a chamfer on the bottom down there to kind of get it started in that hole. So we got the little bushing And I got a little pusher rod here and we'll just come down with my, my arbor press and we'll press her in place. I need to kind of see where it ends up being. Huh, that's actually pretty darn close. So we got this back over here on the grinder and we're just going to face off uh, this stuff that we brazed on here. Probably have to come up a little bit. there there's still a few little places in there but it's uh, miles better than what it was so I wanted to show this there you can see down in there hopefully the bushing pressed in and uh, it's flush in the bottom there so we got a nice surface there And here's this part off the grinder. We still have just a little bit of a rough spot right here around there. I'm not going to worry about it. This thing is miles better. There's a few little places in here too, but this is miles better than it was. And uh, we're going to get this lapped into the uh, valve. 
So the next thing we've got here is we've got to do some uh, TLC to this stem. This is the valve stem for that uh, uh, brake valve. And basically uh, this comes up through the housing. So you got the housing here. This stem comes up through there, go through that bushing. And you got the square uh, piece at the top that the uh, handle will fit on that you t actuate this thing with. Um, and then this down here fits on top of the little uh, valve gear down here in the bottom and just turns it and opens it and closes it to certain ports. One's a pass through and one actually turns the brake on. So as you can see, this piece has issues. Uh, it is significantly worn down right in this area uh, where it got into that bad place where we have now put the bushing in there to replace that with. Uh, but this needs to be completely replaced, I think. And uh, to do that, we actually salvaged a uh, stem. This is actually out of a, out of a brass valve. It's a little bit oversized, so um, I think this needs to be five eighths, and this is just a little bit over that. It already has the, the squares in the top, which is a real close fit. I think a little filing on this piece here or there one, we can easily make that go. Um, but it's a little bit long, so I think what we're gonna do is we're just gonna use this as a, for a piece of material, this, this brass or bronze. Uh, I'm gonna turn it down to the 5 8 diameter uh, we'll part it off, and um, because of the this unusual piece down here on the bottom here, uh, we're going to have to save that and reuse this part. So I think the plan is that we're going to part this off and uh, face that off. We'll bore a hole up in here. We'll make a new stem that will press down into that hole, and we'll pin it in place and basically just replace from here up on this stem. So let's go ahead. We'll get this turned down to the right size and get it prepared. Uh, to go into its new home. So we're just going to take this, uh, we'll chuck it up in the lathe, and uh, I measured it. We got about 40 thousandths that needs to come off of it, so we'll just shave that down real quick. All right, guys, in all honesty here, when I put this thing in the lathe, I had an awful lot of run out out here. This stem has bent a little bit. Uh, we should be able to turn it out but I ended up having to put the four jaw chuck in and indicating it in. I got it running through out here, but there's still a little bit of run out down in the bottom. Uh, that's as good as we can get it. We got to take, uh, like I said, about 40 thousandths off of this, so hopefully we can uh, clean it up. I'm gonna start with about a 20 thousandths pass and we'll get a good measurement. It's not quite cleaning up all the way down at the bottom, uh, but let's see, we got 10, 20, 30. We still got 40 thousandths to go. I'm gonna take another 20 and we'll just sneak up on it. Fit it here onto the valve, and uh, that fits just fine. That's just going to be great. So anyway, that's good. Um, I just need to cut this off down here. I've got plenty of uh, length in there. It's really only going to need to be down here, but I'll cut it the full length, and we'll we'll figure out how long it needs to be in a little bit. So I'm to the point now where it's time to work on this piece here. So we've got, we got the new stem that we're gonna put in here. I've still got to turn down a piece on the bottom that will press in there. But what we need to do is we need to take this old stem off 
we need to face the front of this and we need to drill a hole up in here that we can then uh, make a corresponding hole in this new stem to press in and then again we'll pin it down through the through the middle there um, I'm going to do this in the lathe, but my challenge is, is again, work holding. How do you hold this? we got this casting down here with these little fingers on it. This isn't exactly going to fit up into a three-jaw chuck or four-jaw chuck or any kind of chuck that we can grip and uh, hold uh, because the, the pieces back here behind it are wider than the uh, area that, we'll be, that we need to grip on, and this is a machine surface that we can grip on. So here's what we're going to do. I, I made a little collar and uh, I made the board the inside to fit up over this shoulder and then I put a split in here where it will compress. And my plan here is, is we're just going to slide this up on here like such. I then go put this in my, my chuck. I squeeze it. This turns into a clamp that clamps down around this piece and that should hold it for us to come over here and um, do the job we need to do. At least that's the plan. Uh, let's go over to the lathe and see how it works out. So here we are, we're all chucked up now and hopefully this is gonna hold and I know that stem is not perfect. So we got, it looks pretty good down here. There's a little bit right on the end, but I think this is bent up here. So I'm not worried about that. But first thing we're gonna do is just come in here. I got a parting tool in here and we're just gonna get as close as we can. Probably good. And let's just go in here and cut that out. Appears to be holding pretty good. a little bit proud of where it needs to be so we're just going to face down the uh, whole surface of it until we get that brass where we want it to. And we'll come in here first with a little center drill get a hole started in the very center. And now we're going to drill the hole, the 3 8 hole. It needs to go just a little over a half inch deep. I'm just taking my time. I don't want to push it too hard in that collar and risk uh, pushing it out. I'm not going to force this drill bit too hard. All right, that should be deep enough. All right, so I got the stem chucked up in here now, and what I need to do is we're going to face the bottom of this and turn it down to 3 8. It's actually uh, 0.37 uh, 7, just about 2 thousandths over will give me a nice press fit in there. I measured it with a small bore uh, um, micrometer and, and that drill bit drilled it just a little bit oversized. So anyway, let's get in here and get this thing knocked out. Right, I want to go up a half inch. I'm just going to scale this. Witness mark right there. I'm going to come in a little bit deeper. About a half inch. I'm just putting a shoulder on there that I can see. Turn 
turn this down. I'm over at my arbor press now. We're gonna press this in place. Now, one thing I wanna just make note of here is that uh, I made sure that I timed this little uh, square piece at the top in the same position so that my handle would be positioned right. And it is in the right position. So now, with any luck, yeah, this is gonna press right in. Boom, that's good. That was a nice, I mean, it wasn't super, super duper tight, but it was tight enough for what we're gonna do. Uh, I mean, it is a press fit. And uh, we will now pin that in place. And I think we'll have this uh, stem done. All right, I've already got this centered up. I've already got a center hole in here. We're just gonna drill a 530 seconds uh, through hole through this. And uh, that'll have a place for a spring pin or roll pin uh, to go down through. So we'll just drill all the way through. And five thirty seconds uh, spring pin. All right, it's a little bit proud. I'm just gonna take that over to the grinder and grind it off flush. I knew it was gonna stick out a little bit, but that's fine, it's flush on the bottom. And uh, there's really no interference on this uh, thing in here, so that's not gonna be dragging on anything. So I'll just zip that off on the grinder. All right, our, our valve stem is now ready to go in. I will note that I put a little bushing in here, and this is because over time, this whole, uh, piece that it wears on the bottom has worn down. You can see where it's touching there. So I wanted that to engage a little bit deeper. So we we just put a little bushing in there to kind of take up some extra space. I did some measurements and uh, I think we nailed it right on. Now this uh, bushing is gonna slide up in here and get it down in here. So now if you look down in here, there's this little ear, there's a little piece that hits two ears and that limits the travel and when you do that that turns this uh, little piece on here about a quarter of a turn and that here's the bottom of the valve body this piece fits down in this slot here and basically it turns um, the, the actual valve now we of course surface ground this earlier uh, these were then lapped together to make them perfectly flat but the way this work is, the steam comes into this valve in this up here, and in the bottom, there are two ports. Uh, one goes to exhaust, one goes to the actual uh, brake. So you got this going on here in the bottom. One of these is through, this, these two holes are actually, there's, there's a cord out it's hollow in here that joins them. So in this position, Basically what's happening is you just have exhaust. So the steam is just going straight through, or there's no steam coming through. The steam is just pushing down on this and you got a, uh, a release between the brake cylinder and the exhaust, okay? When you turn your handle like such, now the steam is going straight down this hole into this hole here and that will actually put steam to the jam brake on there. So it's just a quarter turn uh, going on here with this uh, valve. And uh, anyway, we're ready to put this thing back together. Uh, let's see here. I'm gonna kind of roll it around this way. Make sure I got this lined up right, yep. There we go, so. That will now sandwich on there. I'm gonna get some bolts in there and we'll get it all assembled and kind of show you how it works here or how it looks. So we have our assembled brake valve now. Again, the steam will come in up here. You got two ports on the bottom, one that goes to the brakes, one that goes to the exhaust. Um, in fact, if you look down here right now, I don't know if you can see down in there, but um, it's going to the exhaust, right? I mean, going to the steam brake right now. The brakes are on. 
uh, which is correct. When the brakes are forward, they're on. You turn it a quarter of a turn this way, the brakes are now off, and you should be able to see the two steam ports where they go between the two. So this is back together. It's ready to go back on the locomotive. We do need, I gotta get two more screws going here. Actually, I'm gonna replace all of these. Uh, we only brought two of them from the museum for some reason, and these are old and rusty and crusty. So we'll replace those. But other than that, this valve is rebuilt and ready to go back on the locomotive. So with that, that's gonna be a wrap on the locomotive uh, jam brake valve here. Uh, all rebuilt, ready to go back on. This thing should be much better. We also need to put some packing up here in the top, uh, but we can do all that when it goes back on the locomotive. Uh, hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you later.